A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. So according to Luke. Jesus went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he drew near to Bethage and Bethany, at the mount that is called Olivet, he sent two disciples, saying, Go into the village opposite, where on entering you will find a colt tied, on which no one has ever yet <coughs> sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? You shall say this, The Lord has need of it. So those who were sent went away and found it as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owners said to them, Why are you untying the colt? And they said, The Lord has need of it. And they brought it to Jesus, and throwing their garments on the colt, they set Jesus upon it. And as he rode along, they spread their garments on the road. As he was drawing near at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees in the multitude said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, to you Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, like the crowds who proclaim Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace. The children of Jerusalem welcome Christ the King. They carried all the branches. You need to go first. And loudly praise the Lord. Hosanna. The children of Jerusalem welcome Christ the King. They carried olive branches and loudly praised the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory, praise, and honor to you, Redeemer. 
the living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Saviour to take flesh and submit to the cross. Graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. from the prophet Isaiah. The Lord has given me a disciple's tongue so that I may know how to reply to the weary. He provides me with speech. Each morning he wakes me to hear, to listen like a disciple. The Lord has opened my ear. For my part I made no resistance, neither did I turn away. I offered my back to those who struck me, my cheeks to those who tore at my beard. I did not cover my face against insult and spittle. The Lord comes to my help, so that I am untouched by the insults. So too I set my face like flint. I know I shall not be shamed. The word of the Lord. reading of the lips 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. His state was divine, yet Christ Jesus did not cling to his equality with God, but emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave and became, as all men are, and being as all men are, he was humbler yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. But God raised him high and gave him the name which is above all other names, so that all beings in the heavens, on earth and in the underworld should bend the knee at the name of Jesus and that every tongue should acclaim Jesus Christ as Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Please stand to welcome the gospel. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have longed to eat this Passover with you before I suffer, because I tell you, I shall not eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then, taking a cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and share it among you, because, because from now on I tell you I shall not drink wine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took some <coughs> bread, and when he had given thanks, broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body which will be given for you. Do this as a memorial of me. He did the same with the cup after supper and said, this cup is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, which will be poured out for you. And yet here with me on table is the hand of the man who betrays me. The Son of Man does indeed go to his fate, even as it has been decreed, but alas for that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to ask one another which of them it could be who was to do this thing. A dispute arose also between them about which should be reckoned the greatest. But he said to them, Among pagans it is the kings who lord it over them, and those who have authority over them are given the title benefactor. This must not happen with you. No, the greatest among you must behave as if he were the youngest, the leader as if he were the one who serves. For who is greater? the one at the table or the one who serves. The one at table, surely, yet here am I among you as one who serves. You are the men who have stood by me faithfully in my trials, and now I confer a kingdom on you, just as my father conferred one on me. You will eat and drink at my table in heaven, and you will sit on thrones to judge the twelve tribes of Israel. 
Simon, Simon, Satan, you must know, has got his wish to sift you all like wheat. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And once you have recovered, you in turn will strengthen your brothers. He answered, <coughs> Lord, I will be ready to go to prison with you and to death. Jesus replied, I tell you, Peter, by the time the cock crows today, you will have denied me three times that you know me. He said to them, When I sent you out without a purse or haversack or sandals, were you short of anything? They answered, No. He said to them, But now if you have a purse, take it. If you have a haversack, do the same. If you have no sword, sell your cloak and buy one. Because I tell you, these words of scripture have to be fulfilled in me. He let himself be taken for a criminal. Yes, what scripture says about me is even now reaching its fulfillment. They said, Lord, there are two swords here now. He said to them, That is enough. He then left <coughs> the upper room to make his way as usual to the Mount of Olives with the disciples following. When they reached the place, he said to them, Pray not to be put to the test. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw away and knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, let your will be done, not mine. Then an angel <coughs> appeared to him, coming from heaven to give him strength. In his anguish he prayed even more earnestly, and his sweat fell to the ground like great drops of blood. When he rose from prayer, he went to the disciples and found them sleeping for sheer grief. He said to them, Why are you asleep? Get up and pray, not to be put to the test. He was still speaking <coughs> when a number of men appeared, and at the head of them, the man called Judas, one of the twelve, who went up to Jesus to kiss him. Jesus said, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? His followers, seeing what was happening, said, Lord, shall we use our swords? And one of them struck out at the high priest's servant <coughs> and cut off his right ear. But at this Jesus spoke, Leave off, that will do. And touching the man's ear, he healed him. And Jesus spoke to the chief priests and captains of the temple guard and elders who had come for him. He said, Am I a brigand that you had to set out with swords and clubs? When I was among you in the temple day after day, you never moved to lay hands on me. But this is your hour. This is the reign of darkness. They seized him then and led him away, and they took him to the high priest's house. <coughs> Peter followed at a distance. They had lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard, and Peter sat down among them. And as he was sitting there by the blaze, a servant girl saw him, peered at him and said, This person was with him too. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. Shortly afterwards, someone else saw him and said, You are another of them. But Peter replied, I am not, my friend. About an hour later, another man insisted, saying, This fellow was certainly with him. Why, he is a Galilean. Peter said, My friend, I do not know what you are talking about. At that instant, while he was still speaking, the cock crew, and the Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. And Peter remembered what the Lord had said to him. Before the cock crows today, you will have disowned me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. Meanwhile, the men who guarded Jesus were mocking and beating him. They blindfolded him and questioned him, saying, Play the prophet. Who hit you then? And then they continued heaping insults on him. When day broke, 
there was a meeting of the elders of the people attended by the chief priests and scribes. He was brought before their council and they said to him, If you are the Christ, tell us. He replied, If I tell you, you will not believe me. And if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. Then they all said, So you are the Son of God then? He answered, It is you who say I am. And they said, What need of witnesses have we now? We have heard it from ourselves, from our own lips. The whole assembly then rose, and they brought him before Pilate. They began their accusations by saying, We found this man inciting our people to revolt, opposing payment to tribute to Caesar, and claiming to be Christ. Pilate put to him this question. Are you king of the Jews? He replied, It is you who say it. Pilate then said to the chief priests and the crowd, I find no case against this man. But they persisted. He is inflaming the people with his teaching all over Judea. It has come to all the way from Galilee where he started down to here. When Pilate heard this, he asked if the man were a Galilean, and finding that he came under Herod's jurisdiction, <coughs> he passed him over to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem at that time. Herod was delighted to see Jesus. He had heard about him and had been wanting for a long time to set eyes on him. Moreover, he was hoping to see some miracle work by him. So he questioned him at some length, but without getting any reply. Meanwhile, the chief priests and the scribes were there, violently pressing their accusations. Then Herod, together with his guards, treated him with contempt and made fun of him. He put a rich cloak on him and sent him back to Pilate. And though Herod and Pilate had been enemies before, they were reconciled that same day. Pilate then summoned the chief priests and the leading men and the people. He said, You brought this man before me as a political agitator. Now I have gone into the matter myself in your presence and found no case against him. Nor has Herod either, since he was sent him back to us. As you can see, the man has done nothing that deserves death, so sh I shall have him flogged and then let him go. But as one man they howled, Away with him, give us Barabbas. This man had been thrown into prison for causing a riot in the city and for murder. Pilate was anxious to set Jesus free and addressed them again, but they shouted back, Crucify him, crucify him. And for the third time, he spoke to them. Why, what ham, ham has this man done? I have found no case against him that deserves death, so I shall have him punished and let him go. But they kept on shouting at the top of their voices, demanding that he should be crucified, and their shouts were growing louder. Pilate then gave his verdict. Their demand was to be granted. He released the man they asked for, who had been imprisoned for rioting and murder, and handed Jesus over to them to deal with as they pleased. As they were leading him away, they seized on a man, Simon from Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, and made him shoulder the cross and carry it behind Jesus. Large numbers of people followed him, and of women too, who mourned and lamented for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep rather for yourselves and for your children. For the days will surely come when people will say, Happy are those who are barren, the wombs who have never borne, the breasts that have never suckled. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, or to the hills, Cover us. For if men use the green wood like this, what will happen when it is dry? 
Now with him, they were also leading out two other criminals to be executed. When they reached the place called the Skull, they crucified him there and the criminals also, one on the right, the other on the left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. Then they cast lots to share out his clothing. The people stayed there watching him. As for the leaders, they jeered at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself. He is the Christ of God, the Chosen One. The soldiers mocked him too, and when they approached to offer him vinegar, they said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Above him there was an inscription, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals hanging there abused him, saying, are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us as well. But the other spoke up and rebuked him. <coughs> Have you no fear of God at all? You got the same sentence as he did. But in our case, we deserved it. We are paying for what we did. But this man has done nothing wrong. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, Indeed. I promise you, today you will, you will be with me in paradise. It was now about the sixth hour, and with the sun eclipsed, a darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. The veil of the temple was torn right down the middle, and when Jesus had cried out in a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. With these words, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he gave praise to God and said, This was a great and good man. And when all the people who had gathered for the spectacle saw what had happened, they went home beating their breasts. All his friends stood at a distance. So also did the women who had accompanied him from Galilee, and they saw all this happen. Then a member of the council arrived, an upright and virtuous man named Joseph. He had not consented to what the others had planned and carried out. He came from Arimathea, a Jewish town, and he lived in the hope of seeing the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. He then took it down, wrapped it in a shroud and put him in a tomb which was hewn in stone, in which no one had yet been laid. It was preparation day, and the Sabbath was imminent. Meanwhile, the women who had come from Galilee with Jesus were following behind. They took note of the tomb and of the position of the body. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments, and on the Sabbath day they rested as the law required. We have just heard the passion of our Lord and I'm sure you've asked the question why do we go through it now on Palm Sunday when in when fact, fact we don't, we don't celebrate, celebrate his death until Good Friday? There's something slightly out of kilter, isn't there? Because tomorrow, well, on, on Monday, we go back and we start preparing for <clears throat> Holy Thursday and then Good Friday and then Holy Saturday and we await the resurrection on Sunday. 
So why does the church every year on Palm Sunday have us read these readings again? And it's not something new, it's something which has been part of the Christian tradition for centuries. You will know that Bach wrote the great St. Matthew and St. John Passions. The John Passion was always meant to be sung on Good Friday because that's the Passion we will read on Good Friday. But the Matthew Passion and others were always sung as we pondered on the Sunday before Good Friday, the story. And it's not as if we don't know the story. So why do we read it again? I was taught when I was a novice, back in 1986 I was a novice. It's hard to imagine that because there are probably some people here who weren't born when I was a novice. Many of you would have been alive when I was a novice. But when I was a novice, my novice master said to me, you should treat the week from Palm Sunday and in particular Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday, all the way to Easter Sunday as a retreat because he said every year you will discover something new and since 86 till now every holy week I've discovered something new about myself not always the kind of things I wanted to find out about myself generally things that have been problematic that have left me somehow vulnerable. And that's why we begin Holy Week with the Passion. Not so that we will remember what happened, but so that we will join Jesus again in the story that we know so well, but not as a spectator. If we join him as a spectator, it's like watching that movie that I never watched the passion of our Lord or whatever it was that was produced some years ago and I have refused to this day to watch it because I would not allow any Hollywood person influence my relationship to Jesus in the passion. I would not allow myself to be influenced by pictures because this is a sacred time. This is the time when I do not observe him being crucified but I walk with him. And every year I find there is somebody in the story who is me, who I walk with next to Jesus. Sometimes it's Mary. Sometimes it's Mary of Magdala. Sometimes it's Peter. Sometimes it's John, the beloved disciple. Sometimes it's even Judas but to stand with him in the story, not as a spectator, but as a participant. Because as a spectator, you're watching a movie. But as a participant, you are walking with him and you meet him. And only by walking with him and meeting him in this small retreat that we do every year, will some part of you be resurrected with him? Yeah, of course, the chances are I won't die between now and Easter Sunday. But there is part of me that every year needs, a new part needs to be found to be resurrected. And that's what Holy Week is about. It's not about going out and buying Easter eggs. It's not about going to the Easter show, which the last time I went to the Easter show was in 1975. It was a long time ago. It's not about watching holy things on TV, but it's about emptying yourself and allowing yourself to be part of what's happening so that some new part of you will meet Jesus Christ. And if every year this happens, then every year this Holy Week retreat, which we are all invited to do, will go on perfecting us, transforming us, revealing to us through the experience of a more profound experience of who we are, we will meet Jesus Christ.
and the purpose is quite simple. The purpose is in view of next Sunday, that if I walk with him, with him, and he with me in my weakness and vulnerability, what he walks with in his death will be resurrected. And then indeed on Easter Sunday, we shall all be changed in the twinkling of an eye we shall stand with God. Jesus has entered his city. Our palms and cries of homage fade away as the words of the gospel tell the story of his suffering and death. Let us now bring our prayers to God our Father. For the church all around the world, following the Saviour during Holy Week. Let us pray to the Lord. That the mercy of God will deliver the people of Ukraine and many other places around the world from the destructive evil of war and make peace possible. Let us pray to the Lord. For our parish community, that this Holy Week will be a time of deep spiritual preparation for the celebration of Jesus' passion death and resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all who are suffering from the floods in our area, that they will receive all the assistance they need so that they can face the future with courage and hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that all who are sick and bereaved may receive healing and acceptance through Christ and the intercession of St. Mary of the Cross. Let us pray to the Lord. For the gentle repose of the faithful departed, especially Clara Zidi, Michael Behan, Marge Graham, Sister Therese Doherty, Barry Townsend, and Father John Worthington. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we make these and all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen.
sisters, that my sacrifice and yours <coughs> may be acceptable to God, our, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice that you will pray. In our name, pray. 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 Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty <coughs> and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. <coughs> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <coughs> The mystery of faith. Save our Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters, especially Ethel, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, Saint Teresa, Saint John of the Cross, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you, through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen.
at the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, 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 hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, Lord I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, that only say the word and my soul shall be
O Lord, O Lord, nourish with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, that just as through the death of your Son you brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. And my mighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.